In this episode of the Encourage Inspire podcast, I'm joined by songwriter, artist, and music producer OJs. Man, OJs is a Baltimore, Maryland native, and uh, this was a great episode. Man, we talked about how we first got connected through a previous podcast guest I've had on the pod, uh, entertainment attorney and hip hop artist Tracy Lee. Uh, we talked about again his early love for music and ultimately learning how to make beats on FL Studio, which ultimately led him to go to school and learn audio engineering. And then, you know, we talked about him able to be able to land some of his early industry placements in the mixtape era with artists like Lord Lord Banks and several others, as well as work with artists such as Eric Robertson, Cy Smith, and producers like Troy Taylor, just to name a few. And then we share about also he shares about his passion for starting his own independent record label called on the track music group and find an artist to make a difference with and then we end the episode talking about his life living with sickle cell anemia and how that has shaped him in his journey in life and music so i hope you guys enjoy this episode Going on, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Encourage and Inspire podcast. This is episode number 88. And I got a very special guest with me today. I got my man OJ's with me. OJ's on the track. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, bro? Oh, man. I can't call it, man. Everything good, man. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up, man. We just, I've been following you for a while and just everything that you've been doing, man. And, you know, I, I first learned about you through. Uh, Tracy Lee, Trey Lee, my right. guy. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we had met through a uh, music conference and then, you know, um, just built a relationship. And yeah. he's, he's awesome, man. He's awesome. I know you guys have been working together for a long time. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, and I love what you did with um, Party Time. You know, oh, like, thank you. I love thank what you, you. did with do with that joint, man. How you how you incorporated the new flavor with the old flavor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna talk about that, man. I had 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 to get some blessings before that one, man. <laughs> uh, for sure, for sure, man. I mean, I mean, Trey's uh, a special cat, especially you know having the success that he had as a as a major label artist, but then to become an attorney to also coming back to do independent music it's just right it's interesting because there's really nobody else that's like done it like that nope. you know you know what i'm saying so we'll definitely get in we'll definitely get into that um and like i said i know you don't work with my, my guy troy taylor you know, oh yeah shout out yeah to Tyler to troy taylor man i gotta get him yes, on sir. the pod yeah troy taylor you to go <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> cool dude man we always see each other overseas at new school rules and you know uh-huh. Whenever times, whenever times we get a chance to chop it up, you know, you know, it's always cool. Got a lot of respect for him, for sure. No doubt, for sure, man. So we are gonna get this started. Have a good time. So I always like to, to to ask the question, man. Like, what's 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 your first introduction to music, man? What do you, what kind of made you fall in love with it? Uh, to be honest, man, it, it started from the basement. Yeah. Like, um, all right. So for instance, I I, I grew up with just music just playing around the household man you know just being a young kid from Baltimore and my dad was just very 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 into jazz music right. and so like growing up that's all I heard throughout the house was just jazz and you know old school music and uh you know even to the point where you know my mom and my grandmother they, you know when they cleaning up that's all they listening to is just the old school mu- music right and so it just it, it after a while, it was just it just became a part of me. So uh, when I was about 14 years old, uh, I think I can't remember what version was out there at that time. But Fruity Loops had just came out at that time. Mm-hmm. It was it was literally called Fruity Loops and it had Toucan Sam on the actual box of it. Yeah. And uh, it was crazy. So my homeboy had he, he had a, a, a copy of it. And so he was like, yo. 
let's uh let's let's see what this is about. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right. So we loaded it up. I took it home, and then the rest is history. <laughs> like right, right, right. After, after that, like I was just like, man, like I can actually, like, I can make music from this. Like what? And then yeah. everything just spiraled on after that. And then like while I was in high school, it, I, I just became known as the guy that made beats because every I was quiet. I was real quiet in school, but people knew me via my music. Yeah. So just going around throughout the, you know, the cafeteria and, and putting headphones on people, people, and they just listen like, yo, what is, yo, this is crazy. And then that's right. just how, that's how my popularity got started through a high school, just the, okay. the guy that made beats. And then after that, I went to, um, uh, I went on to engineering school after high school, okay. uh, you know, to learn audio engineering, Sheffield Institute for the Recording Arts. Okay. I went there and then, yeah, man, just been working in and out of studios since then. And right now, man, I'm I'm really just thankful, you know, to still be doing it, you know, 20 some plus years later, to right. still be doing this, man. And it's always new and refreshing every time. I get behind the keys or board or anything, man. It's it's just something that that's in me that I love to do, dog. Well, no, I love that, man. I love it. It's interesting, man, because like with Fruity Loops, you know, I I try to learn. That's how I know production is not easy because <laughs> most people you know usually learn in that program because it's really addition and subtraction. You know, that's like, that's true. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, but it's hard because I always say producers, y'all see music in y'all head, and yeah. And it's hard for people who don't know, who, like y'all literally see it. Like it's yeah. Like, and for the average person, they will never understand that. But like y'all see how it's supposed to be broken down. Y'all right. Just, it's just something y'all understand. Like it's just that's what makes y'all so special as producers because y'all see the beat in your head, like visually, yeah. and you're able to somehow figure out how to make that actually come to fruition. Where the average person would be will have no clue how to do that. But that's what makes you guys so special. Because production is is not easy. It's hard. It's extremely hard. <laughs> right, and that's why you know I I look at so many young kids that's coming up that have been introduced to to F, what's now called FL Studio. Mm-hmm. Um, they're introduced to it, but the funny thing about it is it didn't used to have all these features that it has now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to it used to be just a block, a channel block, and yeah. and a playlist, and you're looking at it like. Wait a minute. So, what button do I press? Like exactly. it was a whole right. experience, and then yeah, you have you have the different numbers that link to the mixer channel, and you like yeah, okay, so right. that controls this. So yeah, it, it didn't have everything that it has now. So you know, it's wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> but what I love about music production is it doesn't matter what you're using, as mm-hmm. long as it's hot, it's hot. Yeah, you know? no, nobody cares, bro. At the end of the day, man, nobody cares. Yes what you made the beat on. Nobody's going to know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, people make it hit records in their bedrooms off of facts. programs that they're comfortable with. So, at the end of the That's day, facts. if you know how to take that, whatever doll you work under, or whatever, yep. you know, as long as you know how to how to take that and, and export that into whatever you need to export into mix, you know, and and to do whatever you need to do outside of that, like, who cares? You know, at the end of the day, right. what 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 program was made on? Because really, when it comes to DAWs, it's really just personal preference. Some people like exactly. Loops, some people like Pro Tools, some people like Logic Pro, some people Logic, like Q- Reason, all Reason, that. Yeah. Cubase. You yeah. know, so it just really depends on like whatever it is you're comfortable with. So I, I'm like, look, man, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is you rock with, it's all good. exactly as long as it's exactly. hot, bro. Because I trust me, I hear. These days, bro, I hear a lot of trash music. Like, I, yeah. hear, I hear a lot of garbage track. I mean, there's people out there who really want to be doing music, and it's like they have no. They, it's just the product is just not there, and I think it's because people have we have people have access now than never before. Yeah, so they feel like they need to be making records where records used to be making records used to be something like unique. This industry, this way, was a is a small or used to be. It still is small, but. It mm-hmm. used to be like in a small elite club, but you had to actually know yeah. it to be good to even get into this place. Like it wasn't, that's what Leo was saying. I remember that one day that clip that had went viral, like he came up knowing like you had to be good. You had to, you had to be able to sing at a certain key, like key dance, do certain, you had to be able to do these things at a high level to even be able to become, be, be in the game. But nowadays those, those the barriers to entry are so low 
you know, anybody my mama think they can be in this business, in this industry. That's true. That's true. <laughs> You know, you know, in the age of, you know, social media and YouTube mm -hmm. and everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, so many people are using those outlets to, you know, sure. from and they don't even have to. They don't really have to be good, to be honest. Right. You don't. They got a, a bunch of streams or a bunch mm -hmm. of, you know, views or mm -hmm. on something. And people don't understand, like, that's not necessarily talent. The people actually go in there. You're getting you're getting your likes and views ran up because they just want to see and mm -hmm. laugh at you. Yeah. But, you know, but. You let them tell it they the hottest things on the planet yeah. you know but yeah it's, it's, it's just how it is it's it's I, the era we in it's the it's yeah. the, you, know, you can't complain about it like it's just the era that we're in you know it I is mean? it's like it's like sports man like like it's interesting because at the time of this recorded the NBA, the first night of the nba draft was last night right and, and mm -hmm. one of the guys that got drafted was a guy named zach Eady, who was just a college player yeah, year right and it was interesting because 25 years ago that man is the number one pick in the league. Right. At at, at seven two, could pretty much play with his back to the basket. But big men these days, I mean, you gotta be able to shoot you gotta be able to shoot the three. It is a different it's a different iteration of of the game, of the modern game. So like so that's why people are like, Oh, I can't believe he even got picked that high because he's a guy he first of all, he's only been playing basketball for like five years. Yeah. But like, yo, so even even be able to like within five years to be this to be the college player of the year, it's pretty damn good if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, right. to be, you know, but but the fact of the game has changed so much, uh, it just shows you like with anything else how you have to evolve because Facts. you know, Brook Lopez when he first came into the NBA was not a three point shooter and tur literally turned himself into a three point shooter, and that's probably why he's lasted this long. Exactly. Because he, if he hadn't done that, he'd probably be out the league already. So yeah, you know, so like anything, you got to evolve. I think with music, like it's just a different time. Like you, you can't come, right. you can't come, you can't even complain because half the stuff I don't understand what these cats are even saying. But it, <laughs> but it's it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and in our generation, bro, we listen to we listen to music as fans of music more, like as as us being millennials and the, mm -hmm. like. Like we like these days, young cats don't they don't listen to music at the for the sake of how we just listen to music, how we just can listen to music as fans of music, because we, we just come from, we just come up in a different time, and I think you, know, you can't really complain about it, just what it is. And if you want to be relevant, and like one thing I love about Troy Taylor is like that's why he's still relevant 30, 30, 33, 35 plus years in the game still. Yeah, we keep young people around them. That's the only way. That's the only way you stay in tune. But what's going on? What's you going keep, on? You got to keep young people around you because you're not. He he's 55 years old. Like he ain't supposed yeah. to know. He ain't supposed to know what's hot. You 55. Yeah. You ain't supposed to know what. Like the, the, the young people got to tell you what's good. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. So that's why I thought like it was an it was an honor to be able to you know chop it up with him and uh, actually you know work on stuff and go to his house and mm -hmm. and, and and digging in some music you know and but it just goes to the ego as well. Yeah, you got yeah. so many, you got so many, to be honest, some of the older cats that's in the game, they yeah. you know, yeah. their, their, their ego is just exactly. out of control. Exactly. That yeah, they don't yeah. want to, they're setting their ways to where right. they don't want to give nothing new a chance. Right. And they downplay all the things that, that us and the people that's younger than us are doing, mm -hmm. you know, but that's not how you grow or continue yeah. to grow within this yeah. business. You got it's you bro. The, the music industry is forever changing, bro. Like, Facts. Like the, like this generation, like I would say, like the Gen Zers, and mm -hmm. even after that, the Gen Alpha. So like the middle schoolers right now, they are Gen Alphas. Alphas. Yeah. And so they're the generation after Gen Z, and so it's just, it's just a different time. So like you have you're a content artists are content creators. I mean that's mm -hmm. just what they are. In this generation like. You're not necessarily. I don't really use the word recording artist because, in this younger generation, that's not really. Yeah, you got to record, make sure the vocal is done properly. Don't get me wrong, but, but ultimately, to me, you you got to create content. And that's just nature, that's the nature of the game. You and cats who was coming up before this generation didn't have to worry about that. Like that's a fact. You know. So I think that. I, go ahead. No, it's crazy because it's like the the only reason. <laughs> Why half of the half of the placements or people that I've met mm -hmm. have been via social media because mm -hmm. I, of either my beat videos or just 
in any video that's allowing people to understand who I am, yeah. you know, and being able to reach out to other individuals, you know, to let them know, like, yo, like, I, I, I got that heat and things yeah. of that sort, you know, but that, that wouldn't have happened, you know, if this was probably, you know, back, back in the day where so many things were so, yeah. uh, it was gate kept yep. so heavily, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's why, you know, social media, I look at social media as it's a gift and a curse and all yeah. how, it's how you use it. Absolutely. You use it as a tool, the way so, it's supposed to be for you your win. business. You, you can win. Easily. You can win. It's, it's yeah. so many things that you can do with it, mm -hmm. you know, but if you're just sitting there, just absorbing content as opposed to creating content, then right. there's, then that's there's a, problem, a disconnect. Right. Exactly. And, and, and you know, when, I, when I'm teaching clients and sharing and information, I say, well, I don't like social media. I said, why not? A lot of times it's because they don't know who they're talking to. And that's usually, that's usually why I come in and kind of show them, like, first of all, you got to understand, as, a, as an artist, even as a producer, you're a problem solver. Yeah. What, 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 problems, what problems do you solve for your, your target audience, right? So, you, so right. again, like when I'm, when I'm taking... You there? Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Yep. Okay, okay. Um, when I'm taking people through the process of my, my educational framework called the genesis of super fan building, a lot of times I'm taking them through the process, stuff that they've never done before. And I tell them, like, well, like you got to look at yourself as a problem solver. Like, like there's something specific that you do. There's something specific that OJs does to right. make him unique while people want to comment over, over and over again to use his beats or 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 whatever it is they, they doing with you because of something you do that's uniquely you know connected to you. So right. you know, when, when you think about yourself in that way and know and know who you're solving problems for and know who you're talking to, it makes it a lot easier in my opinion to make content. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So. Exactly. Because <laughs> like with me, like I didn't want to like when I actually started to do like uh get on social media and, and make it prevalent. I was mostly doing beat videos and then I'll kind of like switch it up to actually invite people to understand like who I am as a person mm -hmm. behind behind the board as well as in front of it. So, right. you know, that really engaged people like, oh, well, wait a minute, hold up. I didn't know that he has sickle cell. He makes beats yeah. too. He does yeah. any hot and then So it's, I, I think that, you know, it's important to also show that vulnerability Mm -hmm. you know, as well to you know you can let you can let people in you know you don't have to show them your your, your entire world right but the thing is you know just let them in enough so that they can have uh, have and build a connection with you right you understand so yeah I, I i love that man i love that for sure for sure man so um man you work with a lot of great artists you know we and we mentioned it you know what i'm saying um well, even, even 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 before that, like, mm -hmm. um, like when, when when did you know like okay this is this is something you wanted to do professionally? Like, what is something like music like okay I, I want to do this and I I want to be able to make a living doing this and you know and be able to this is something I love to do knowing that like man I really I have a gift I know I can actually mm -hmm. make money doing this and mm -hmm. actually you know, pursuing that. That was after, after I got out of um, uh, engineering school. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's when I think that was around the time of the mixtape era. Mm -hmm. All right. Now with the mixtape era, probably like two years after I got out of school, I was I was in and out and 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 working within different studios, going place to place, and so one day, I had the opportunity to work on a couple of mixtapes for Lloyd Banks mm. around that, around that time. This was about 2009. Okay. And he came, he came out with, uh, uh, the, the cold corner mixtape mm -hmm. and, uh, the return of the PLK mixtape. And fortunately mm. I was on both of those. And after I got those placements, it was just like, Oh, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, it, it was an eye opener because, for a minute, I was like, man, I don't, I'm not trying to just be, you know, considered as like a 
underground basement producer and everything. I was like, yo, I'm trying to get my stuff out there. Yeah. But at that time, you know, you was de- we was dealing with uh, this person is connected to that person and that person yeah. is connected to this person. So right, right. that was the only way that I could get anything to somebody. And fortunately, it got to the ears of, um, uh, I think it was DJ Superstar J. DJ yep. Superstar J, and he was the one that got it to Lloyd Banks. Okay. And um, yeah, so I had two, two, uh, two records on those mixtapes. And ever since then, man, it was just like the resume started to build because it put a battery in my back. Like, okay, now, now mm-hmm. we, now let's see who I can get this music to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and ever, ever since then, um, I had created, I had a rap group that I was producing at the time Mm -hmm. and they were like really like getting out there. And so that got the attention of who I'm working with now, Tracy Lee. Okay. So Tracy Lee did a a feature with, with the guys that I was working with. And man, that was, that was history. I've been working with Tracy ever since. And that was around 2012. Yeah, I know you got. Yeah, cause I know you guys been doing stuff for a long. Yeah, long we. Time. Yeah, for a very long time, man. Yeah, and that, that's um, what's up, man. And so, like now, it was now things started to get a little bit heavy because his world opened up an even bigger world for me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, being able to work with him now, I'm being taken to different different events and mm. uh parties and 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 being able to network with other individuals that he that he knows mm-hmm. and now i'm building these relationships with these people yeah and now i'm starting to get not just personal relationships now i'm building musical relationships and now things are starting to flourish a little bit better right so it's like that's why i tell people like you have to network it's yeah. not about it, you know. You can make a million beats behind you know behind closed doors all day, yeah. And it can be hot, but if they're not getting to anybody, if you're not putting them in front of people's faces, then yeah, they, they just gonna, don't and sit. They gonna write. They gonna matter. Yeah, you, it's not gonna at matter. At the end, at the end of the day, as much as you know, the pandemic showed us that we could still move digitally and things like that, which is yes. Which is cool. But at the end of the day, there is there is still a a, a shake hands and kiss babies approach. To this industry, it's people at yeah. the end of the day, and you yeah. gotta, and you gotta be able to be comfortable with getting connected with people. And I think, right, I think that's a major key to success, man. Major, exactly, major, major key to success. So yeah, so you had a chance to work with artists, you know, Tracy, you mentioned Lord Banks, Eric Roberson, mm-hmm. you know, you had big cuts. I think, I think I saw Mindless Behavior, yeah, you know, yeah, Cy Smith, you know, mm-hmm. all kinds of people. So I mean, and I'm sure there's a that that's a versatile kind of um, group of people from soul yeah. from from soul from neo from soul to soul hip hop to R and B. So talk hip-hop. to me about like your, your your versatility when it comes to production, man. Like and the ability to like you know you know be in those different spaces, man. Like and how that's kind of shaped your journey. Yeah, like uh, the, even to be considered like uh, a, a top producer to some of these people is is like a blessing in disguise, man, because you got to, one thing I, I I tell people this all the time, like we, we as producers and engineers are, we, we are literally servants to the music. Like we, absolutely. this, this, this is what we are. Like when it comes to anybody, I don't care who you are, when we get in the studio, like you have to be able to listen. Like if you want to create something that's, amazing tracy i tell you it's been plenty of times where i'm like nope let's go back let's do that again let's do that. like and it's a blessing because man this 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 man is 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 my big bro and he's like yeah listening to me you know he, to be able he, to guide he, him but he trusts you know you. That, where to that, go yeah that's what it's all you know? about like you like is to say if, if if we're not if we can't trust if we can't be hard each other or uh, doing time when we could like there's no reason for us to work together like like he there should be a trust there Right. It should be a trust that you know what you're doing, you know. And even though Tracy Lee been in the room with legends, you know. Yeah, of course. But but he but he trusts that you know what you're doing. So right. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I I'll give you a, a good story. Like when we was during the pandemic, things was crazy. We weren't we weren't really 
doing much, you know, and nobody was really doing much. It was kind right. of like at a standstill. People mm -hmm. were trying to set up things to be like, be like, okay, what are we going to do after this? Yeah. Fortunately, me and Tracy came up with something where we were like, you know, nah, we, we're going to ride this thing out. So we yeah. decided to create an album during the pandemic. Right. It was hard at first because, you know, we, we were in two separate places yeah. and it was just like, all right, well, what, what we did was I made a, I made probably, I sent him a folder with probably like almost 60 to 70 something beats. Mm -hmm. And he went through and picked the ones he loved and everything. And then mm -hmm. once we got the, the, the beats that we wanted, he went ahead and he, uh, I think he, he actually bought his setup. He bought his, his interface and his speakers and, mm -hmm. uh, and his, uh, his computer that day. And when it came, he went ahead and started recording. People don't mm -hmm. understand. We did the Glory album. That was during the pandemic. Oh, and wow. it was, he recorded his vocals on GarageBand and <laughs> sent them to me. Oh, wow. After he sent them to me, I went ahead, did my thing. And uh, we got the features and everything from everybody because literally everybody was home. Right. Everybody was home and right. everybody was itching, itching to work. So it was just like, right, it was right. no problem. Right. You know? right. And everything just kind of like, it, it came together so quick and effortless because we had that time period where one, everybody, everybody was, was, was chilling and, and ready to work. And mm. so now we got that momentum. And so we created that, we created the project probably within a three month span, mm -hmm. start to finish and then started promoting the project. And it was crazy. Then it went up for, Grammy consideration. Now that's what's and up. this was over the pandemic, man. Like that's what's up, man. And, and how did he do a good job recording his vocal on Garage Band? Because that's, I mean, that's a that's a basic. Like, did you have to do a lot of work to it at when he sent it back? Or to be it? honest, to be honest, Tracy did good. What I told him, I told him all. all see, people don't understand. Like it's a it's about your microphone and your interface too. If right, your microphone right. and your interface is trash. Your recording is going to come out trash. Right. Unfortunately, he listened to me and got the right equipment. He got he he did that and his vocals came back very very clear. And I was that's like, that's good. good. That's good. good. That make, that makes it easier for you when you got to go do what you got to do. Man, tell me because being an engineer as well, I done got some vocals from some people that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that and that's when you got to tax it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, boy. Yeah, oh my yeah. god! But yeah. <laughs> But that's the name of the game. But yeah, man, yeah. you know, the thing is, it's not it's not to look at the op those type of um, um, things as, you know, uh, hardships, but look at them as opportunities, mm -hmm. because we could have just literally sat on our behinds the entire mm -hmm. pandemic and not did nothing. Right, right, right. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So mm -hmm. we went ahead and continued to do what we love to do. And exactly. put that music out and... Yeah, so, man. Things things kept kept spiraling after that, man. It was crazy. I, I love that, man. I love that, man. And, and transitioning, so you know, your your, your company, your label, mm -hmm. you know, um, on, on the track music group. Like, what made you so? Is it just you on the label as, as an artist? Or are you signing artists to the company? Signing so, artists yeah. to the yeah, signing yeah. artists to the company. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so talk to me about what made you want to start the label, and then like, and really. Take a take a take a position on education. I think, bro. I think education is yeah. the most is the missing link for for many artists and producers because there's a lot of producers yeah. who don't necessarily understand contracts and what what different licenses mean and different things Facts. like that and, and, and just how these should be structured because there's there's an educational aspect to being in this industry. You know, I was just having this conversation earlier. Mm -hmm. Entertainment is the only industry where people feel like they don't need to go get educated, but they want to go in right away and just go start learning, just go start doing it. <laughs> and, I, and I feel like that's where a lot of them mess up at because they don't actually take the time to educate themselves. That's true. That's true. You know, you know? You know like the reason what the reason behind on the track music group, you know, that was that was another thing that was during the pandemic as well. Um I had a art. I had an artist that I started working with, and he just he found out that his management wasn't really treating him right. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So I said, okay. So I looked into it some more, and it it, it was just shady from the jump, man. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was crazy. So I said, all right, you know what? I really want to do this, and I really not just want to help artists, but I really want to showcase, you know, the, the, the talent and the people that I really believe in. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, I created On The Track Music Group, went ahead, got all the paperwork and everything, and uh, the, all the business stuff out the way with, and then I, I presented him with the contract. And then, first of all, my first artist, his name is Nizza. Okay. And the dude is out of this world, man. He's got, he's got kind of like that. He's got a vibe where he can go anywhere. But the thing is, he's got, he's from the East coast, but he's got like this West coast kind of presence okay. about him. And he's very, very, uh, uh, um, historic when it comes to knowing who came before him, mm -hmm. how it influenced his style. Right. And so that's what, another thing I loved about him, but yeah, man. Um, so, I went ahead and signed this. Uh, he's my he was my first artist mm -hmm. uh, on the track music group, and uh, since then we've we've done a lot of great things, man. Um, he's blowing up really good overseas right now, and because that's okay. what I wanted to do. I wanted to get it to where he he was he was getting popping like overseas and everything, and bring it back home. Bro, um, that's the that's the way to go about it, bro. Like that's that's good mm -hmm. job, but that's one of the things that kind of, I'm doing to set myself apart is showing artists how to be global. You know, there you go. Uh, one of the conferences I mentioned before that I that had met Tracy was uh, to the New School Rule. I'm not sure if you're familiar with New School Rule, yeah. which, yes, sir. which is in uh, Rotterdam. So, mm -hmm. I, well, Hector Maduro, she and her husband Greg, they run that conference. I'm actually a partner with them, and I bring artists from America nice. over to the Netherlands to perform and be on global stages. And Hector has all the contacts to the U.S. labels, everybody there. So, because right. the thing with the thing with Holland is they don't really recognize urban music like that. So there's mm -hmm. there's not a lot of like they they have a the Dutch has a that has their own music industry, but they don't really recognize like black music as something. Like they just right. they, they that's not really what they what they do. They're just we're, we're trying to get them to do it more, but so so what we do school rules is a, a showcase festival as well as a music conference. Mm -hmm. And so um so I've been going overseas even before then, since 2016, to this conference called Medem, which is the okay. uh, largest international B2B uh, music conference in, in the industry. And that's really more about artists who want to be, who want to build out their business. We, I mean, we need different publishers, yeah. different different um, organizations overseas and you know, things like that, that, that really, unfortunately, in America don't know that you exist because it's, they might be based in France and we might be based in, you know, the Czech Republic. They might be based in, you know, Africa. They so so well, everybody comes together to for the love of music and want to bring music together. So I've been doing that since 2016, but I, I really yeah. wanted to make a focus of helping artists be global because I think that's what's gonna help them actually build and be able to sustain and build an audience by being global, man. So I'm I'm all, I'm definitely with that, bro. Definitely. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, like I think his large one of his largest fan bases is in Germany, okay. um, and um, I think it was a we were supposed to do a uh, a TV show over in Germ over in Germany, mm -hmm. but he has a schedule conflict with that. We had another event here, mm -hmm. to, you know, right. but uh, it's just dope. It's just dope that you know, um, you know, I I just think like. So many people think that oh you gotta you gotta get popping in America first and right right gotta, right you know right. you gotta nah like it's, you know? it's, it's hard to get it's hard to get That's popping over it's hard to get popping over here because of of the yeah. one because everybody everybody is, is trying to do trying to get big and sometimes yeah. as which I understand you know I get yeah, that, you know. that that artists want to be the biggest. Everybody wants to be the biggest act in the world, so they really understand what it when you when you really get into this business and you understand what it looks like behind the scenes. Facts. You, and, <laughs> you really start <laughs> to see this is a lot of this smoking mirrors, man. A lot of yeah. these smoking mirrors, and and you got to be really, really mentally prepared for this. But like, most you people are not, most people are not mentally most people are not physically ready and mentally ready for what they actually say they want. That's a fact. And yeah, I think that I think I think I think when you get into this industry, you realize quickly like. Everybody's not your friend. Everybody doesn't want to see you succeed. You know, there's a lot of backstabbing going on. And, you know, I, 
people are screwing people over, going a lot of that happens in our industry. Like if you're look if you're looking for for integrity, you don't want to get out. But there's there's yeah. not a lot of integrity in the entertainment business. Not just music, but overall, the overall entertainment. But there's not a lot of there's not a lot of integrity. So it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. Exactly. And you know, and, and learning that. So um, yeah. that's what it's all about, bro. Thanks. Give me one second. No doubt. Um We'll be right back. Yeah, man. So I think, you know, I think that that like I said, you know, being in this bit like being in this business, you know, I I try to always operate with integrity and do that I do because I do that's just the way I roll, bro. Like, you know, my right. brand my brand is encouraged and inspire, man. And you know, I was born with a disability, and we're gonna get into same. Uh, I was, we're gonna get into uh, it's like uh, what you you know what your battle with sickle cell, and and right. I sort of felt like man, and I didn't even know you had sickle, sickle cell before I read your yeah. bio, but it's like it's perfect because in the, in the, in this podcast, I I like to talk about you know people with this like disability awareness or something they have maybe have going on in music business and people who have an interesting stories. So you check all three boxes, bro. So I'm just. And I'm just glad that uh that, okay. that they were able to do that. But um but yeah, man, so you know, transitioning to uh you know your battle with sickle cell anemia, man. So talk to me about that, man. I know that's and I know that's prevalent predominantly in Amer African American, am I right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, you know, some of the the doctors and everything, they labeled it as a as, as a black disease or a uh, ethnic disease. Mm -hmm. but to be honest, it's really it's it, it it's really just a uh, a blood disorder. <laughs> okay. okay. And, um, it affects it affects um, people of color mostly. Mm -hmm. um, now, the best way to describe sickle cell is, of course, we have we do have regular blood cells, but our cells aren't shaped like regular cells. Right. Our cells are shaped literally like half moons yeah i've seen that so, yeah yeah so when they go through out they don't flow through the body properly i always say that it's like the game barrel of monkeys okay <laughs> they get stuck on their cells you know right and that's what causes um the the intense pain the mm. uh organ failure strokes mm -hmm. to the point even death like it gets mm -hmm. it, it gets really real mm -hmm. um both me and my sister have sickle cell anemia we, okay. were born, we were born with it. Okay. And uh, when two parents have the sickle cell trait, the child will come out with having sickle cell disease. Right, right. Now, if one person has the trait and the other parent does not, then it's a 50% 50, 50 chance that the child will or will not have the, the disease. Right, right. And um, so, yeah, so, and back, back then, at that, you know, around... The 70s and 80s, it really wasn't a lot of testing right. at that time, you know, for uh, sickle cell, you know, right. so right. especially around the time of my sister, me and my sister are 12 years apart. Okay. And, um, especially around that time, it really wasn't a lot of testing. When I came about in 87, mm -hmm. they were just starting to do blood tests for sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. and, um, my parents, they knew that they was taking a chance, but they was like, look. Regardless, we we gonna we love you regardless, you know. Right, like, right, 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 right. You know, so um, I'm thankful to be here. I'm definitely thankful. I think I I had my first serious sickle cell crisis when I was only three years old, mm. and uh, I was in a hospital for probably a month. And mm. I and my mom always tells me the story. She always says that I I looked at her after being in that hospital and being poked and prodded with all these needles and everything. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and said, ma, life is rough. Mind you, I'm three years old. I don't know nothing about life, but just, it was yeah. just kind of like a glimpse of what right. was to come throughout the rest of my life. Right, right. Uh, it has been, uh, it has been a struggle. I, For sure, I, I can't imagine. I mean, even, yeah, I mean, you even know, me, it's, yeah, it's I, I get you, even me having, Super palsy and like it's having and dealing with this my whole life, you know. Yeah. 
I, but all I know is to be happy. It's, you know, and trust me, there's days where there's days, bro, where it, it's not fun. There's yeah. days where I wouldn't wish this on nobody. But I also choose not to be a negative person because bro, it's so easy to be to be mad at the world, to be yeah. It's easy to do that, but I just I don't I don't want to live my life that way. I think there's easier. Yeah, way, I think there's better and smarter ways to go about living life. They're right. always upset and depressed because, you know, these are the cards of fortune that you were dealt, I was dealt, and all yeah. we can do is make the best of it. That's all we can do. That's a fact. That's and a I, fact. And I feel like you, you, you've done that. I'm doing that. You know, even and I'm doing it in, in the entertainment business. Like I, bro, I've created everything. Nobody's created. Like, nobody gave me, giving me anything. Like, right. the, unfortunately, there is no the entertainment business is not socially responsible, meaning that they care about people with special needs like that. So that's why you, know, that's why you see very few of us actually in the industry doing things because there's just not many opportunities for us. There's right. a little bit, there's a little bit on the on the acting side and film and TV side. That's but true. but there isn't and there isn't much of it on the executive side, the side that I'm on. So yeah. I haven't had the I've basically had to create the opportunities for myself. And it's you know it's it's been a heck of a journey. It hasn't been easy by any means. Still isn't easy because I work with you know independent artists who unfortunately don't always have the financial means to pay for things at a rate that's always you know comparable. But right. I do this because this is passion work. I'm serving others, you know, and that's why I do it. And that's why I'm going to continue to do it because it's something right. I absolutely, absolutely love doing, man. So, man, it's been a pleasure, bro. It's been a pleasure to have you, man. Like. Before we get out of here, man, where where can where can the people connect with you? Where can they? How can oh, they? Man, uh, can, all social media platforms. Um, I am O J S, man. That's I M O J I double Z. Tell your friends about me, man. <laughs> hey, man, bro, it's been absolute pleasure, man. Like I said, you know, connecting with you on social media through through Tracy Lee and just you know, watching you, and I'm just so glad we had a chance to chop it up. Definitely gonna have oh, you come come back again, man. And just, uh, and just I'm looking forward to just more things that you have going on in the set. It's been a pleasure, man. It's been a pleasure. Definitely, man. Definitely. And anything you need, man, just holler at me. Definitely. I got you, man. Guys, it's been another episode of the Encourage This Fire podcast. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace. Peace.